Hello and welcome to the Young Auth Pod. And today we will discuss the upper limb fractures with eponyms. Eponymous fractures, or the named fractures, are frequently asked in exams. Let us first understand the Bankart's lesion. In case of an anterior shoulder dislocation, the head of the humerus is driven forward, tearing the capsule and producing avulsion of the anterior glenoid labrum. This is called the Bankart's lesion. When the Bankart's lesion is associated with anterior glenoid fracture, then it is called a Bankart's fracture. Here in this X-ray. The dislocation has been reduced and you can see the bony fragment of the glenoid trim. Hill sacs fracture is a cortical indentation on the posterior lateral aspect of the humeral head seen in cases of recurrent anterior dislocation of the shoulder joint. It is a compression fracture due to humeral head being forced against the anterior glenoid rim when it dislocates anteriorly. It is named after Harold Arthur Hill and Maurice David Sachs who first described this lesion. The Hostin Lewis fracture is a humerus shaft oblique fracture at the junction of middle and distal thirds of the bone, which may entrap or lacerate the radial nerve as it passes through the intermuscular septum. The Montagia fracture is named after Giovanni Battista Montagia, an Italian surgeon who first described this fracture. Montagia fracture is the fracture of proximal third of the shaft of ulna, which is associated with radial head dislocation. On a radiograph, how do you identify radial head dislocation? Well, normally, a line drawn down the neck of the radius should intersect the capitulum. It is called the radiocapitular line. If the line does not intersect the capitulum, then there is radial head dislocation. Type 1 Montagia is the most common type and is usually asked in exams where there is anterior dislocation of the radial head with fracture of the ulnar diaphysis with anterior angulation. Type 1 Montagia results from force pronation of the forearm. Galeazzi fracture dislocation is defined as fracture of the distal third of the radius shaft with subluxation or dislocation of the distal radio ulnar joint. On a forearm x-ray, you can appreciate fracture of the distal third of the radius shaft with dislocation of the distal radio ulnar joint. It is often known as fracture of necessity because it requires open reduction and internal fixation to achieve a good outcome. It is named after Galeazzi who first described it. The night stick fracture is an isolated fracture of the shaft of ulna resulting from direct trauma to the ulna along its 
subcutaneous border classically as the victim attempts to protect the head from the assault he gets night stick fracture the hum fracture is an injury to the elbow comprising a fracture of the olecranon with an associated anterior dislocation of the radial head it is a variant of pontagia fracture in children it is named after ac hum who first described it the sx lopresti lesion is defined as longitudinal disruption of the forearm interosseous membrane usually combined with dislocation or fracture dislocation of the radial head plus distal radio ulna joint injury on the forearm radiograph you can appreciate fracture dislocation of the radial head and the distal radio ulna joint injury The injury is named after Peter S X Lopresti who described it. Abraham Cole has described a transverse fracture of the radius just proximal to the wrist joint at the corticocancellous junction with various combinations of dorsal angulation. dorsal displacement radial shift and radial shortening clinically it has been described as a dinner fork deformity there is dorsal angulation and dorsal displacement of the distal fragment on an ap radiograph of the wrist joint you can appreciate the fracture line at the corticocancellous junction and on the lateral view there is a dorsal tilt of the distal fragment colis fracture is the most common of all fractures in older people the patient is usually an older woman who gives a history of falling on her outstretched hand the high incidence being related to the onset of postmenopausal osteoporosis Smith's fracture it was described by Robert William Smith Smith's fracture is a transverse fracture of the distal radius at the corticocancellous junction with volar angulation of the distal radius clinically it has been described as a garden spade deformity there is volar angulation of the distal radius This is often referred to as reverse colis fracture since the deformity here is opposite to colis. On an AP radiograph of the wrist joint you can appreciate the fracture line at the corticocancellous junction and the volar tilt in the lateral view. The mechanism of injury is fall on the back of the hand. that is the patient fall on a flexed wrist with forearm fixed in supination the barton's fracture is named after john ria barton the barton fracture is an intraarticular fracture through the distal articular surface of the radius where the dorsal or volar rim of the distal radius is displaced with hand and carpus the mechanism of injury is a shearing force resulting from fall on an outstretched hand The Schoeffer's fracture is an intraarticular transverse or oblique fracture of the radial styloid process.
The name chauffeur fracture originates from the early chauffeurs who sustained these injuries when the car backfired while the chauffeur was hand cranking to start the car. The chauffeur's fracture is also known as backfire fracture or Hutchinson fracture. The Bennett's fracture dislocation is named after Edward Hellerin Bennett. It is an oblique intraarticular fracture of the base of first metacarpal with subluxation of the carpometacarpal joint. The distal metacarpal fragment is displaced in proximal, radial and dorsal direction by the pull of abductor pollicis longus muscle that remains attached to the shaft of the metacarpal. The radiograph shows that a small triangular fragment has remained in contact with the medial edge of the trapezium while the remainder of the thumb is subluxated proximally, pulled upon by abductor pollicis longus tendon. The Rolando fracture is also an intraarticular fracture, but it is comminuted fracture of the base of the first metacarpal with a T or Y configuration. A boxer's fracture is the fracture through the neck of the fifth metacarpal. It usually occurs in boxers due to the longitudinal force of the boxer's punch. The radiograph of a hand shows an impacted transverse fracture with volar angulation of the distal fragment. So this was all about the eponymous fractures of upper limb. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments below. For more interesting content in orthopedics, please subscribe to The Young Orthopod and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We will be back with another topic in orthopedics. See you soon.